Good afternoon. Thank you all so much for being here right here at the Canadian Embassy. Uh, my name is Ann Wright and I'm a 29-year U.S. Army veteran. I retired as a colonel. I also was a U.S. diplomat who resigned in opposition to the war in Iraq back in March of 2003. And since then I've been traveling all over the country and even up to Canada uh, to uh, uh, express my concerns about the Bush administration's foreign policies and particularly the war in Iraq and the pending war in Iran. I was up here in, in March of, uh, in August of this year uh, to attend at the, at an invitation by Canadian uh, members of parliament and organizations to uh, be a spokesperson uh, for Americans concerned about the Security and Prosperity Partnership uh, uh, plan that the governments or the leaders of the United States, Canada, and Mexico have. I was very concerned about particular security cooperation, particularly after I was stopped at the Ottawa airport, that I was detained for four hours, all of my goods searched, all of my t-shirts taken out, all of everything searched because I have an arrest record, a conviction record in the United States for peaceful, nonviolent protests of Bush administration policies, primarily the war in Iraq. I've been arrested for sitting in front of the White House. I've been arrested for standing up and speaking in the U.S. Congress. All of these are misdemeanors. They're payable by fines. I've never spent a day in jail as punishment, only hours in jail prior to paying a fine. Anyway, for me to get into the country after four hours, they finally said, we will allow you a temporary visit to Canada. You'll have to pay $200, and we will give you a three-day temporary resident permit. And this is it right here. 200 bucks for this temporary resident permit. They said you will have to apply to come into Canada with school. That you'll have to go to the Canadian Embassy and get uh, applications. When I came here three weeks ago with a letter to the ambassador about what had happened in my protest of of their using. What, what actually triggered this is that the Canadian government has decided as a part of, the, I think, the security cooperation that they will use the National Crime Information Center database created by the, the U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation. And anything the FBI puts on that database, the Canadian government accepts at face value. They don't question it. They just say, if the FBI put it on there, you're on it, and we don't care what the reason was that you have been arrested or convicted of a, of a misdemeanor, you are no longer eligible to come into Canada. And we said, well, but we're eligible to travel in our own country. Our own country doesn't think that we're uh, horrible people. They, we may have been convicted of a peaceful, nonviolent incident, but uh, we can still travel in our own country. And why are you, the Canadian government, applying greater restrictions on us than even our own government does? When you look at the FBI's database, it says that, that that list is supposed to be for convicted sexual offenders, foreign fugitives, identity theft, immigration violators, missing persons, persons under protection orders, supervised released persons, unidentified persons, the U.S. Secret Service protect, Protective Program, violent gang and terrorist organizations, and wanted person files. And it was hard for us to believe that we fell under any of those. So first, the FBI should not have put us on that list. And secondly, we believe the Canadian government should not be doing the dirty political intimidation work for the Bush administration by using that database. Yesterday, Medea Benjamin and I, Medea, the co-founder of Code Pink Women for Peace and Global Exchange, and I went to uh, Buffalo to uh, ask more questions about this, and I'd like to turn this over to Medea to explain what happened yesterday. Uh, yes, my name is Medea Benjamin. I'm the co-founder of the human rights organization Global Exchange, which has been around for 20 years and uh, sends thousands of U.S. citizens on citizen-to-citizen -citizen diplomacy exchanges around the world, and I'm also the founder of the women's peace movement Code Pink. Uh, yesterday, Anne Wright and myself uh, walked across the Rainbow Bridge at Niagara Falls and we got to customs. We were asked to go to the secondary screening. At that point, we were held for two and a half hours 
while they searched the NCIC database, which is the FBI database of a criminal uh, 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 database. And it turned up that there were two sheets on each of us. They printed those out. They talked to us about each of the crimes. In my case, the only crime that they were concerned about is when I had taken, on International Women's Day, a petition signed by 152,000 women from around the world saying no to the war in Iraq. When we tried to deliver them to the U.S. mission to the U.N., instead of accepting it like they had done the year before, they actually closed down the building and arrested us. We were convicted for trespassing. It was a simple misdemeanor for which we paid a $50 fine. It was that conviction that was the grounds uh, in which I was being held and was ultimately told that I could not enter. And Anne Wright, as she has explained, had similar kinds of uh, misdemeanors uh, that uh, was used as the criteria for keeping us out. Um, as I said, I'm the director of an organization, Global Exchange, whose job is to promote citizen diplomacy. Uh, I travel all over the world on a regular basis. I have never had this kind of problem. Canada is the first country, to our knowledge, that is using this beefed up database of the FBI as its criteria for judging who enters, which is why we consider this so outrageous and so dangerous. Because if Canada starts to do this and keeps out people like us, maybe other countries will start to do it as well. So we think it's important to stop this right away. Um, that is why we've been in touch with members of parliament from Canada. In fact, just this morning we got a letter from uh, uh, Olivia Chow, a member of parliament who says in her closing, in Canada, peaceful protest is not a criminal activity, despite how some U.S. agencies may regard it. In the future, I trust that people like Ms. Benjamin and Colonel Wright will we be welcomed into Canada based on appropriate standards decided by the Canadian government and not by any other foreign body. Uh, under this criteria that Canada is now using, Martin Luther King would never been ha have been allowed into the United States, nor any of the leaders of our civil rights movement, nor any of the leaders of the suffragette movement in the United States that gave us the right to vote, or the leaders of the gay rights movement, or any of the other social movements that really form the heart and soul, the best that the United States has to offer. So we think this is absurd, it's outrageous, it must be reversed. We will be going from here to the FBI to say to them, take peaceful protests off of a criminal database, but we are also appealing to the Canadians, and we have a meeting after this with um, uh, officials from the embassy to say, please, use common sense. Don't treat peaceful uh, activists as criminals. Let's remember that the majority of people in the United States and the majority of people in Canada are against this war in Iraq. Let's remember that it's the war in Iraq that is illegal and criminal. And when the Canadians say that to return to Canada, we must fill out this outrageous 18-page report that includes getting police records and court transcripts and sets of fingerprints and uh, uh, documenting where we have lived for the past 10 years uh, and having five years of a clean record in order to get back in the country. We say, if you want to go after criminals, the White House is right down there. If you want to find people that really need rehabilitation, it is the people that got us into this illegal, immoral war, not the peacemakers who are trying to end the war.